Hi, I'm Trisha from Club Scrap. Thousands of men and women continue to serve the United States, both here and abroad in the military. Take the time to honor your friends and family by giving them a star for their loyal service. A star book. Let's take a look at the book we're going to make. This comes from the 6x6 military starbook kit from Club Scrap, and all the colors have been deliberately chosen to reflect the machinery and the equipment and uniforms used in the military. The first thing you're going to need to do is fold all of these papers in half. Now, of course, I've already folded these, and let me just point out that this will be one point of a star, and you have seven of each of these papers. So here's that 6x12 folded in half to maintain the 6-inch height. Here's the next one, still six inches tall. If you fold it the wrong way, you know it's not going to work right. There's that one, and then one that's just a little bit smaller. Now this eight by 12 gets handled a little bit differently because what I want this page to be is a pocket. And what that pocket will do is give us a lot more real estate for our finished book. So the way you'll prepare that is by folding it horizontally, and then you'll fold it vertically. And then you will trim with a ruler and a craft knife or other cutting device, you'll trim a little angle at each pocket. Now don't worry about that. You can get those measurements from the design guide. Once you've done that, it's time to prepare some stitching holes. And if you're just starting out in bookbinding, it's, I just want to say it's so nice to have the right tools for the job. And what I have right here is the XL cork board from Timeless Touches. And I keep this cork board right under my table in my craft room so it's always ready when I need it. Now, I'm going to be starting out with one of the folded pages that I have, and I'm going to be making these stitching holes with a ruler and also my retractable paper piercing tool from Timeless Touches. I love this because when I can retract this, I know it's safe when it's not in use. It's great for traveling as well. My friends and I call it the pokey tool, but you can call it what you want. So I'm going to line up my ruler so that I'm right on the fold line, and then pierce at the one inch, two inch, four inch, and five inch spots. Now the most important thing about your piercing here is that it's right on that fold line. The more precise you can be with that, the better. Then what you'll be doing is using this as a pattern for piercing the other pages on your star points. So I'm nesting these together so that those fold lines are tucked right nice into each other. And then I'll carefully place it back on my cork board and then pierce through my original pattern into the page beneath. The most important thing here too is that you maintain the same pattern piece every time you pierce. Now I have pierced the 6x12, the, the 6x4.5, and, and the 6x4. Next what we're going to do is take that signature of pierced holes and do some stitching. I have two yards of waxed linen thread and I have a needle on each end of the thread. So it's one thread, two needles. I'm going to take this needle and enter the second hole. So here's the first one, there's the second hole. And almost at the same time you put the second needle in this third hole. So you have a needle in two and three going from the valley side of the fold out to the mountain side. So if you can always remember valley and mountain, that's a helpful book binding term. Okay, so now I pull these two needles out and I'm going to pull the slack so that there is no slack left inside and the needles are at the same spot. It's centered in this book. Now, we have a thread coming out of this hole. So what I'm going to do is do a little crisscrossing here. From this hole, I'm going to go back down through hole number two and pull that. And you want it snug. Now, if you tr start pulling too hard, what will happen is the paper will tear. It's weakened there because it's been folded. So just make sure you pull, when you pull snug, you're not pulling too hard. Now, I'm exiting near the closest hole with this needle. So now I'm going out of the hole at the head or the top of the book. Then I'll take the other needle and I'll exit through hole number one or at the tail or the bottom of the book. So some book binding terms here again. And remove the slack and your first signature is officially complete and what you need to do at this point is close it and never open it again. Because if you start stitching inside any of these holes, you're going to have to pull it all out and start over. Now I'm taking another set of pages, the same three sizes nested together just like I did in the first one and I'm just going to set it beside the signature that I just finished. This is open to me and I'll take the needle and make the official connector stitch. So it's going to go in the neighboring hole from the mountain of the sig second signature 
down into the valley. Now if you have to kind of work, work a little bit to find that hole, that's normal. And then pull the slack. Then exit the neighboring hole back to the outside. You'll repeat that same thing on the other end. Make your connector stitch to the next signature and pull that and then come back in the neighboring hole. And so you will continue to do exactly what you did in the previous signature. Remember we did the crisscross, so I'm taking this thread and going down to the bottom of the book or down to the tail. And then this other thread. Now we have two threads crossing each other here. So this was the first signature, this is the second signature. Make sure you put it underneath the second signature. So it's one, two, three. But you continue on and stitch all seven points of the star. And when you finally come to the end, I'll show you what that's gonna look like. Now in this last signature, instead of taking the needles from hole two and three and bringing them back to the outside to attach another page, we don't have any more to attach. Leave your threads on the inside and just tie a double knot, okay? That's all there is to it. Now if you just stopped right here, this would be a beautiful book, but let me show you how we're gonna take this and turn it into the star. What I've done to make that a little bit easier to understand is isolated just one set of stitched pages so that I can show you more easily how this will work. So here are my stitched pages. I just have three of them, but we still have the other two. And these need to be attached any kind of adhesive that you want to use is fine. I tend to be a bookbinding glue person, but uh, I know some people don't like gluing as much as I do. So to me, this is the easiest, but you can use any strong adhesive. And I'm taking the six by nine paper then and attaching it just to the edge of my six by 12 or that dark green paper. Then what I'm gonna do is rotate this around to the other edge and I'll apply glue in the same way I did before. Okay, so then I'll take this edge and attach it to the glued edge, aligning it up corner to corner, edge to edge. The, the cleaner and neater you do this, the better your book is going to look. So after you've glued this in, you might think, well, this paper is way too short. But if you see that it closes and that when you open it up, you get, the star is already starting to be formed. Now this gets yet another layer. And now you're, I'm sure you're thinking this one's too short as well, but if I tip it, I can still close this. And when I look at it from the top, I see how this is really starting to come together. Now people have asked me, what is the point of the papers inside the star? And I'll just tell you, decorative, that's it. They really just make this book a little bit more intense in appearance and I just love how it really adds to it. Now, let me show you what the book is gonna look like when all of the inner pages have been added. So here we're looking at one completely finished signature, but when you have them all together in the stitch bound book, that's where your star will be formed. To hold all of the points of the star together, what you'll want to do is find the outer pages of each signature, like here for example, and then the kit comes with these decorative paper clips, so you'll grab those two outer pages and clip them together. And you'll do that all around the entire book until it's closed at the other end. And of course, then you have the project of decorating. Now while Club Scrap has already done the work for you, finding all of the military colors and putting them together in this kit, there's also another resource that we can use called Memories in Uniform. And their paper designs are made for sophisticated military scrapbooks. And the company is actually owned by a gentleman and his wife who served in the military. So their knowledge of all of the artwork is very thorough. So this will be an element from one of the Memories in Uniform papers that we're gonna be using for the front of our book. And I'm gonna start out with just a distressing tool. There's a little blade inside of here and I'm going to run it along the edge of the paper. Now you can do it a couple of ways and I just want to show you my way. If you hold it, this is one way to do it, but if you let the table hold the paper for you, you can just scrape the edge and that gives it a nice torn distressed look. Now once you've wrecked up the edges a little bit, you also might want to tear them in a couple of places and roll the paper up and then of course we want to make it a little bit dirtier, so we'll add some ink directly from the pad or if you have a special applicator tool that you like to use. And then, once you've done that, let's add a rub-on that specifies the branch of the military. I'm making this book for Jason, who serves in the U.S. Army, and I'm just gonna apply this to the lower corner of this page. And with my bone folder, I'll just make good contact with the rub-on and the paper. And there we go. 
And then there are some alphabet stickers that come with the Branch Military Paper Collections. So I thought it'd be fun. Since they're this shiny black glossy, I thought it'd be great to add a little bit of distress to this as well. So for Jason, I'll choose the J, and I've made a handy dandy paper distressing platform for myself. So I'm sticking the J to some freezer paper attached to some mat board. And I like to just sand away the edges a little bit. And let's hit it with some ink. And then you can attach it right to your book. And I'm sure you're dying by now to see the finished book. I can't wait to show you, it's so cool. Here we are for Jason. This is the title page complete with additional rub-ons and all the distressed letters. Notice how they're off-centered a little bit. And when you open it up, you can see how I've decorated the first page with an embellishment and a rub-on and a photo of Jason serving. And then all of this real estate is available for me to decorate, add more journaling. As I talk to him, I'll be able to know more about what he was thinking when he was serving over there. And I thought when I first got the composite sheet that came with the paper set, there's an image of every paper included in the collection. So I thought it would be neat to add, use those little composite images as an embellishment right on the page inside the book. And I've even included some scanned medals that Jason received for his service. And I just trimmed them a little bit and then attached them to the top of the page and then added the photos beneath. And then continuing on, I just really had a great time putting this book together. And of course, the very last page is images from the newspaper and from his family welcoming him home from service. So I guess at this point, there's just one thing left to say to Jason and all of you. Thank you so much for serving us. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.